Okay, Math 2, Unit 8, Section 2. Probability of independent and dependent events. Now, independent means they don't affect each other. Um, I don't know how, well, I'll just say that to you. Independent means they don't impact each other. So if we have two events, they don't impact each other. Um, an example of one could be flipping coins. You flip a coin and then you flip it again. Did the two flips impact each other? And the answer is no, they're independent. Now, dependent events, that would be like um, removing marbles from a bag. Right? If you've got a bag full of marbles and then you take one out and you put it in your pocket, you have created a dependent event because you've removed something from the sample space, right? Independent, the sample space remains the same. Dependent, the sample space changes. So, um, if independent, the probability of A and B, where A and B are two different events, well, that would be equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. Or you could flop those around and say the probability of B times probability of A. Now, if dependent, probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B given A. That line means given. So the probability of B versus the probability of B given A might not be the same thing, right? Because the sample space might have changed. changed. And we could also write it the other way around, probability of B times probability of A given B. We could also say that in independent events, the probability of A is equal to the probability of A given B. Only in independent events is that, is that true. If they are dependent events, then that would not be true. Um, we're going to also talk about a few different ideas in this. Um, the probability of not A is equal to 1 minus the probability of A. We could rearrange that and say, well, the probability of A is equal to 1 minus the probability of not A. Now, talking about this in real, real terms, um, if we say there's a 10% chance of rain, then there is a 1 minus 10% chance not rain. 1 minus 10% would be 90%. Okay, so we always have to be thinking about it that way. Remember that percents are always less than 1. They're like a decimal. 10% um, is really 0.1. Um, whenever we talk about this 1 minus piece over here, 1 minus, one is always like 100%. It's like everything, all the different options, if we add their probabilities up, their percents, they have to add up to be one. All right, number two. Determine if events A and B are independent. So what we're really going to be checking here is, is probability, how do I want to write that? Um, what we want to say probability A and B, we want to know, is that equal to the probability of A times the probability of B? We want to know, are those equal? And if they're equal, then it's independent. If it's not equal, then it's going to be dependent. So probability not B, I'm looking at this piece right here, probability not B is 7 over 20. The probability of B is going to be 1 minus 7 over 20. 
which will be, what will that be, 13 20ths. So plugging into this formula that I have at the bottom, probability of A and B is 39 over 100. And I want to know, is that equal to probability of A, which is 3 fifths, times the probability of B, which is 13 over 20. And I type those in my calculator, or I just look at it. 39 equals 3 times 13. That's true. 100 equals 5 times 20. That's true. So that means these are independent. All right. Number three. We're doing the same thing in this one. Um, first off, we need to find the probability of A. Probability of A is going to be 1 minus 7 tenths, which is 3 tenths. So I want to plug into the formula. Probability of A and B equals, and I have a little question mark above it because I want to know, is it equal? The probability of A times the probability of B. I plug in and I say, well, 39 over 100 equals, with a question mark, 3 tenths times 1 half. Uh, well, we know that 3 tenths times 1 half is going to be 3 over 20, which is not... 39 over 100, so these are dependent. Right. We don't know what A and B are, but we know that something happened between those two events that changed the sample space. Number four. Again, I want to start off by finding my missing probability. I need probability of B. That should be pretty easy to see. If we say 1 minus 4 fifths, that's going to be 1 fifth. So I'm going to plug in and see, well, probability of A and B equals, prob well, equals with a question mark, probability of A times probability of B. So this is 9 over 100 equals with a question mark, 3 over 10 times 1 over 5. Well, 3 tenths times 1 fifth is 3 over 50, which is not 9 over 100, so these are dependent. Number 5. Again, that's already for us. I'm going to go ahead and plug in right at the beginning. So I say, well, 11 over 40 equals the question mark 1 half times 11 over 20. Well, 1 half times 11 over 20 is 11 over 40, so they are equal, and these are independent. Number six, probability not A is listed, so we need to find the probability of A. 1 minus 3 over 4 is 1 over 4. So now plugging into the formula is going to be 1 over 8, and we want to know, is that equal to 1 fourth times 1 half? Well, that should be really easy to see that, yes, they are independent. Right. These are truly equal. Number seven. Well, probability not A is 1 half, so that means that, really easy, we should be able to see, well, probability of A also has to be 1 half. So plugging into our formula, I have 3 over 20, and then I want to know, is that equal to 1 half times 3 tenths? Well, we see that 3 is 1 times 3, 20 is 2 times 10, so yes, they are. This is independent. All right, that's the front side. The front side, again, we're deciding. Yes or no, are they independent, right? We're saying independent or we're saying dependent. This back side, well, at least for the, the top of it, we're told that they are independent. 
and then we can find our missing probability. We're going to be plugging into the idea, again, probability of A and B equals the probability of A times the probability of B. So, number eight. Probability not A is one half, so that means that probability of A also has to be one half. Probability A and B is listed. The probability of B, we don't know. So starting off, probably A and B is going to be 7 over 40. And that's going to be equal to probability of A, which is 1 half, times the probability of B. I need to solve for the probability of B, so I'm going to multiply everything by 2. Right, That cancels out my 1 half. And I'm going to be left with 7 over 20 equals the probability of B. All right, number nine. We know the probability of A. We know the probability of B. We need to know the probability of A and B. Well, the probability of A and B is equal to 11 over 20 times 7 over 10. So this is 77 over 200. Number 10. Well, probability not A is 2 fifths. So probability of A should be 3 fifths, right? Because they have to add up to a whole. So probability A and B, we just multiply them together. So 3 fifths times 1 fourth is 3 twentieths. Number 11. We know the probability of A. We know A and B, and we need to find B. So I'm going to say, well, A and B is 3 over 20, which should be equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. So 1 over 4 times probability of B. To solve for this, I'm going to multiply both sides by 4. That cancels out my fraction. And I'll be left with 3 fifths is the probability of B. Right. Number 12, events A and B are, de or may, excuse me, they may be dependent. Find the missing probability. All right. So we know that this probability of B given A, that might be equal to the plain old probability of B, right? I set up here, where did I say it? Up to the very top. Right here, probability of A equals A given B if they're independent. But that rule could, we could still use A given B. We could substitute that in for all the independents because it doesn't matter what has happened before it, right? By saying given, it means that something has happened before it. So let's go back down. So we're going to be able to plug into the formula probability of A and B equals probability of A times probability of B given A, right? I'm going to plug in, I'll say, well, 7 over 40 equals probability of A times 1 half. I multiply everything by 2. My 1 half and my 2 cancel. My 40 and my 2 turn into a 20, so my answer is going to be 7 over 20. All right, 13. Again, we're going to be using the same, I think, written formula. Yes, the same written formula. So I'm going to be able to say, well, probability of A and B is going to be equal to the probability of A, 7 tenths, times the probability of B given A, 3 over 20. 7 times 3 is 21, and 10 times 20 is 200. All right, number 14. 
for starters, we need to say that, well, the probability of B is one-fourth, right? One minus three-fourths is one-fourth. Next up, I'm going to have to write a big old long statement. I can say, well, the probability of A and B, that's going to be equal to the probability of B times the probability of A given B. So this is 3 over 40 equals 1 fourth times probability of A given B. I'm going to multiply everything by 4 to get rid of my fraction. This turns this into 3 over 10 equals the probability of A given, not G, but B. All right, and last one, uh, I'll say, well, probability of A and B, 21 over 100, equals probability of B times probability of A given B, so 21 over 50. Whenever I multiply by the reciprocal, I say, well, 50 over 21. And over here, I say 50 over 21. My fractions cancel on the right. And on the left, my 50 and 100 cancel to be a 2. My 21s cancel, and I'm left with 1 half equals probability of B. All right, there we are.